Hi, this is Grégoire from Greg's Whiskey Guide. This is my fourth review uh, in English of a whiskey or spirit drink in that case today. Um, we're here to speak about uh, something you voted for on my Twitter account, Greg's Whiskey G. Um, and you wanted to have the review in English as well as in French. Um, and as it is something special related to France and to uh, Scotland, I think it was a good idea to propose the two reviews, but there were serious contestants uh, in front of this. There were Glenmorangie, Alta, the new uh, private edition one. There was a Yoichi single malt, no age statement, but still very good. Uh, what else? Uh, we have a cognac, which is absolutely fantastic, from Valentin Signé, that I might review uh, later on. Um, what was else? Uh, yeah, great uh, single malt from France as well, uh, Armorique and Glen Armor. Um, okay, so you voted for Campus Box Affinity, which is a very experimental, probably most experimental uh, to date creation from uh, John Glazer, which is the whiskey maker, artisan craft uh, blender, I think we can say that. Um, and um, yeah, I'm going to do the review in English and then uh, do the French version of it and there might be some differences as I'm more at ease in French uh, and I might separate uh, what I will say uh, to make it maybe more interesting uh, and um, different yeah, for the French audience. Um, I set up here several things on my table um, to show examples of uh, compass box creations as well as the topic of today it is mixing scotch with Calvados French eau de vie made out of apples um, okay so um, I'm not gonna uh, do a full explanation of what is Compass Box, uh, Independent Whiskey and Blending Society, uh, but because I've uh, talked a lot about it on my website, which is www.gregswhiskeyguide.com, uh, please check it out. Uh, though the topic is a bit old, I covered, let's say, the 10 first years of uh, Compass Box creations and explaining and uh, reviewing. Uh, different bottlings, so I think could be interesting to have a look even if it's mostly in French uh, Well, okay, so um, To put a long story short Or like some of you like to say without further ado <laughs> uh, But um, I have to read some um, uh, Press release from compass box. I, I received uh, along with this uh, absolutely uh, uh, very nice um, sample which reproduces the, the label of the, the full bottle as well as uh, a thing you can uh, guys also find in uh, the website which is the you know the, the like they say it's the press uh, and fact sheet the, the explanations everything you have to, to know about compass box uh, specifically sorry specially um, the recipe uh, which he provides in his uh, will of uh, transparency John Glazer publishes uh, for each creation um, a very documented file about what uh, he creates despite the fact unfortunately that he cannot state the age statement of some of the components the older ones of each recipe of each blend uh, because it is forbidden by uh, scotch whiskey association and uh, yeah it's a long story maybe i will speak about it later on so uh, we got here um, affinity which is uh, uh, let's say a diplomatic way to state the uh, old alliance <laughs> between France and um, uh, 
and uh, Scotland against who you know <laughs> since the 13th century um, and yeah um, while experimenting visiting friends um, as well um, John had the idea to mix uh, Calvados which is eau de vie made from fruit with uh, scotch whiskey which uh, of course mandatory makes it forbidden to be called a whiskey so uh, Campus Box Affinity is a spirit drink as it contains 37.5 percent of the content uh, made from Calvados of uh, House uh, Christian de Rouen from France uh, which is a renowned uh, Calvados maker which has also the particularity of using uh, sometimes other kind of cask than just uh, French oak uh, or uh, American oak but also sherry cask so should be interesting so um, the press release states it's uh, a new expression limited edition bottle at 46 percent ABV uh, for a total of 6,028 bottles worldwide released uh, available in select specialty uh, retailers for uh, around um, 100 pounds or uh, 150 US dollars um, so uh, it states to make it uh, I'm not gonna read everything don't worry so they say, we've been blending Calvados with Scotch whiskey at home and in our blending room for years simply because we love the way the flavors complement one another. We felt it was time to share it to the world. Uh, Calvados is the world's great spirits. Um, in terms of finesse and character, it stands tall. It stands tall alongside the finest cognacs, tequilas, and malt whiskies. So John Glazer says that Scotland and Normandy have a number of things in common, especially the cool maritime climates. Apples and barley have a long shared story of usage together, particularly in baking. Spirits-wise, it isn't widely known that Calvados producers often double distill in pot stills just like their Scottish cousins. Uh, so the affinity marriage began with Domaine Christian de Rouen Pays d'Auge, Ixo, which is around 10 years, 6 to 10 years old, Calvados, matured in the Drouin cellars in the village of coudray Abu in Normandy. Uh, to this has been added a selection of Scotch malt whiskies aged in French oak and cherry casks, together with a parcel of blend Scotch whisky brought together at young age and further matured for many years in cherry buds. Um, okay, and it goes on describing the flavor profile, etc. So in that recipe, there is 37.5, sorry, uh, of uh, Calvados French oak cask, which are um, also, um, yeah, it doesn't say if it was um, the toast level or okay. Then the rest is made of. Um, of uh, different vattings made of uh, Kleinlich distillery, uh, Daluian distillery, and Tininich distillery. After vatting, we we'll mature it further in our hybrid French oak casks. So, uh, yeah, there are first fill sherry butts involved, there are um, refill sherry butts, French barriques. Um, different kind of uh, toasting from light to heavy uh, French oak cask well it's so it's very complex blend there you go so there is the sample uh, John provided me um, uh, kindly uh, earlier on and I have also to thank uh, Susie Benet who's uh, now uh, working very closely together uh, to manage the, the company and um, Yes, so I have here an example of a, a Calvados in a small bottle, uh, which is uh, 
yeah, very strong, obviously, on uh, on apple notes. I, I did uh, I did taste it earlier on, um, and the problem I had with the idea of blending scotch with the uh, Calvados, to to be honest, is I was very skeptic about the result because it can be very heady. There's something solventy. Uh, there's something that is closer for me uh, to cognac and to armagnac, though it's not wine involved here, it's only apples distilled. But there's something that can be heady, spirity at times. Uh, it's different from grain. Uh, you remember maybe uh, that old motto, I don't know where it comes from, that says, grape or grain, never the twain. So that means in basic English, don't mix grain, uh, grain made um, uh, spirits with uh, wine made spirits. So you can drink beer and whiskey and you can drink on the other side wine and cognac. Well, uh, there will be less uh, troubles than if you mix them. Uh, in the evening when you're gonna drink them. Of course that means you must <laughs> drink responsibly otherwise trouble will come on both sides, okay? Uh, so yeah, I have both two examples of uh, Calvados. Um, this one is more uh, artisan uh, crafted uh, but as you can see it's almost the same color due to the aging and to the um, also you know uh, uh, yeah, the, the 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 distillation. I don't think this caramel added in those ones. Um, this one is a bit uh, more a bit darker. Okay, but well, I don't have informations about that. I'm sorry. Um, so uh, before I get into the tasting, um, so I think I believe it's the first attempt ever. Uh, to mix scotch and uh, calvados uh, if I'm not mistaken I never heard of this before uh, so I was very curious to try it I tried a bit earlier on before lunch I have to uh, to say because I don't like to go right from the start uh, before the camera and make you wait a long long time uh, because I, I have to take my notes in French first and then translate them into English um, and not watch it, the camera so I will do like that pre-assess whiskies or spirit drinks and then do them quickly on the camera um, yeah so uh, probably the first attempt to do uh, uh, something made of uh, the blending of scotch and uh, calvados um, but um, this is not the first uh, whiskey classified as spirit drinks at compass box uh, stranger and stranger uh, recently uh, made to honor the collaboration between uh, the absolutely fantastic design agency that's called uh, Stranger and Stranger um, with Compass Box. So he did a. Um, I will speak about it and review it later on, uh, but on the website. But I can say there's uh, something like 1% of. Uh, um, there's something that's. Uh, non-aged, non-very aged grain, under three years old I mean, so that makes it automatically not uh, allowed to be a scotch whiskey um, and even not a whiskey in theory. Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, an attempt he made before uh, that, but uh, approximately 10 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, he did also this which is uh, Orangerie, which is Scotch whiskey infusion. Uh, that is a basically uh, a recipe of a um, of, uh, Scotch whiskey blend he, do, he does uh, usually. Um, and then um, he added uh, orange peels and uh, different spices to make it something that could be an after dinner drink or to put into cocktails. 
so uh, that the fact he had it, uh, elements that are not 150E, 150A uh, caramel uh, added, which is the only thing is, which is allowed to add in Scotch whiskey, uh, made it uh, also not part of uh, the Scotch family, but a uh, spirit drink. Uh, also, I wanted to mention before I start uh, the tasting properly that uh, about uh, Calvados finishes finishes that is not um, mixing uh, the different spirits together, but just finishing in Calvados cask. Uh, for me, it's one of the most interesting that has been done from the Springbank Distillery. Uh, and it is a uh, 12 years old, six years uh, matured in refilled bourbon casks, and six years in fresh Calvados cask. It was distilled in uh, April 2000 and bottled in 2012 at an ABV of 52.7. And um, I didn't review it yet. Uh, I uh, tried it already a few years ago. This this bottle is a gift, but I tried it at a friend a few years ago and liked it. But it divided opinions in some uh, fans, and Sprigbank fans and Scotch whiskey fans, because you can feel uh, the influence of uh, the Calvados. For me, it's very well balanced. It's not heady. It's very well made. But yeah, for some other whiskey fans, it was not in their alley. So uh, yeah, but I have to uh, mention this because uh, for me, it's one of the um, the best attempts to to mix, uh, not mix, sorry, uh, to uh, have a finishing uh, in, in Calvados, which is uh, here. Uh, I shouldn't say finishing, which is double maturation. Uh, yeah, rather, rather a double. Why this bottle of Kleinlich is here? Because as you may know, it's uh, John Glazer's favorite uh, single malt distillery. And he uses in almost every, uh, not all, but almost every uh, blending he does. Um, and it gives that spicy, that, uh, you know, that uh, structural character uh, in the blends and that wild wild personality um, as well and and you will find also this in the new um, affinity there you go so let's pour now a bit of this and see if my first impressions were confirmed I'm gonna not pour a lot because I'm gonna do two review uh, in a row, so two reviews. So yes, this as you can see this remains clear. Uh, it's a golden uh, yellow but with some ambery hues, but not very dark. Yeah, what is uh, interesting in there is the, the balance that um, uh, it's a bit contradictory with what I'm going to say after, but it has its logic. Sorry. <laughs> um, when I mean by what I mean by balance is that you can feel definitely the Calvados influence in the blend. And uh, yeah, it overtakes uh, the, the, the scotch for me. It, it takes the 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 lead, the control, but you can feel the influence of the of the scotch just on the second ground, like um, you know the fact that there are sherry cask involved that shows up, and what is confusing maybe uh, for some, including me, is that the sherry influence is uh, rejoining the Calvados influence with these uh, cooked apples, notes, and, uh, you know, orchard fruits uh, as well, but mainly the, you know, the fruity 
uh, notes that are common to the Calvados and to the Sherry casks, uh, even if I don't feel very much the nutty side that it could have with the Sherry, uh, or uh, you know, dried fruits and raisins and all that. It's a lovely uh, light and um, balanced and um, so very serene whis uh, whiskey spirit drink. Um, in that, in that, I uh, it reminds me a bit of the story of the Spaniard that uh, John did uh, last year. I still have to assess this one. I couldn't have a sample yet, but probably um, it w w will work to have one. And yeah, the story of Spaniard is, is a sherry-driven uh, creation of uh, of John Glazer. And um, I think they have these ones have something in common. So yeah, a lovely nose. Definitely. There's some, uh, of course, forgot to mention vanilla, which is in common. Scotch and Calvados share the vanilla notes and the spices notes. Ginger, uh, maybe some. Yeah, there might be some pepper, but I, I can be more precise on the nose. Okay, I need a bit of water. No tasting without water is my philosophy. Okay, before, uh, during, and after <laughs> the tasting. Wow. Yeah, so lovely nose with some uh, floral sides on the second ground. First the cooked apples, then the vanilla and the spices, and then maybe uh, behind some very delicate flowers. Okay, now on the palette. Hmm. Yeah. So there's definitely uh, this um, this um, Calvados influence that's very uh, present, but it's tamed. Tamed in a way that it is not aggressive. It's not heady or spirity like I was afraid of. Um, it's very drinkable, very sweet. Um, I know um, John had advised to serve this ice over ice or mixed with uh, uh, the amaro of your choice and vermouth for a unique twist also on a boulevardier cocktail, a beautiful cocktail I have to say. Or uh, John says simply pair it with a delicious sweet tart tatin. That could be interesting guys. <laughs> I'm telling you. But I, I think it's already good and neat. Um, uh, about uh, whiskey over ice, I have to say uh, one of the best experience I had is uh, was the um, the French edition uh, called um, Whiskey de Table, uh, which was a very young whiskies uh, blended together, pitted with a strong Kaolila basis, and it was absolutely wonderful on ice. So. Um, if you can't find this, which is a very affordable bottle, Whiskey de Table it's called, made for the French market, but you might find it on online shops, uh, maybe, uh, but go for it, it's absolutely uh, very, very pleasant stuff. Yeah, so, so we got the balance we got the expressivity and we got something complex as well as very stable, settled uh, spirit. I'm going to try now a few drops. And as it's getting once again long, I'm going to stop it very soon. I'm curious to see if I'm going to do 
the same link as I'm not editing, editing at all uh, between the French and the English version. <laughs> we'll see. Hmm. A slightly solventy side that goes uh, now uh, up with water. But okay, it doesn't stay. Hmm. Yeah, I would say for this one, uh, as it is 46% ABV, um, even if I already wrote that on my website, the ABV and the drinkability uh, has almost nothing to do with the one with the other. Uh, you can find very aggressive whiskies at 40% and uh, very sweet ones at 60 But yeah. Of course, the more ABV it has, the more you should, in theory, add water. But it's not mandatory and sometimes it doesn't play well together. Especially if there are shared casks involved. Um, yeah, so I would say try it with a few drops if you like, but I will go it for it neat. And maybe I will try because he has experimented it, so he knows what he's talking about. Uh, John's advice if I uh, find me a bottle of this we'll see so uh, there you go uh, for me I haven't uh, did the calculation yet um, yes yeah, I forgot to do that <laughs> uh, but I will say something that could go um, around maybe 88 or uh, something like that 88 to a bit more uh, out of 100 I don't usually rate um, uh, spirit drinks, uh, but I, I do sometimes rate age, aged spirit drinks. Um, for this one, John didn't put any age statement, even of the youngest. It's a choice, I understand this choice. Um, my guessing will be that it's probably 10 to 15 or maybe a bit of 20 years old cask involved in this because there's some depth in it uh, and about the Calvados casks I will go for they say XO but I will go for 10 to 12 years maybe as well so uh, it's not a young whiskey and the price tag gives me the impression it could be even older than that be 20 years old 25 for some content I don't know uh, okay so that's it um, to conclude I'll say this is a very lovely uh, creation from John and uh, you know that John is a supporter of my website um, he uh, you can read the recommendations in English or in French that in my reference pages he kindly left uh, to support me. Uh, I have to precise at this point that um, even if he supports me, uh, like I said, morally, not financially, <laughs> but he provides me nice samples, um, he knows and that's very, uh, really very, uh, I think, a fair deal. He knows that if I don't like one of his creations, I will say it. And I wrote it, I wrote uh, some reviews that were not so enthusiastic about some expressions. So for me, I'm not biased. You, you can, of course, think I am. But for me, uh, I think I'm not. I'm trying to be as sincere as possible uh, for every uh, sample or bottle, because I buy some, I have from, uh, from Compass Box. But uh, the majority of what I have tasted so far in, 20, in 19 years, I think it's, it's a very beautiful, uh, very beautiful uh, um, array of uh, creations. And uh, uh, as we are reaching the 20th anniversary next year uh, of Compass Box Whiskey Society, uh, I wanted to do uh, this uh, 
not only this review that came a bit by by chance because it was French and Scottish things mixed, but uh, I'm gonna do a big topic on on the website because I, I've been very late to uh, review some of his uh, samples and whiskies, uh, so I didn't want to be felt as biased, so I, I waited a bit. But I have to thank him for all that, and I cannot let it go for years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll review about 10 to uh, 15 expressions. Some of mine, uh, some rare bottlings, such as, as this one, uh, which is uh, something I uh, something I bottled myself at Whiskey Life Paris. It's a cast drink expression of the spice tree. My favorite one, I have to say so far, from the spice tree. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, stay tuned for this for the the website. And uh, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you like the review and the overall presentation. And um, and uh, cheers and thanks for su subscribing and uh, liking. Uh, and see you soon. Bye.